welcome back to another episode of the Drift Build series. So today we're going to be filling this hole with this. Now you'll be very surprised at how I made this cover plate. We'll get onto that later, but first we'll start on wiring up the switch panel. So basically ever since I've had this, the fan wiring's been bodged up and just hardwired to the car. And I've just had to pull the fuse in and out to get it going every time, which is not ideal. So the main reason I got this is so I could have my fan wiring fixed to a constant switch. Um, which I could have just wired one switch, but I figured I could get this and then that gives me opportunity to wire up more things in the future. And it looks cool. Fit the switch panel and hook up a switch for the fans. Now you could always do this yourself, buy all the switches and all the wiring and everything, but you can buy these off eBay. And if you know me, you know I love buying stuff off eBay because I'm cheap and nasty. But this is probably the most efficient way to do it. And I'm not the first one to do a how-to on one of these, so I'm just gonna do it my own way and hopefully it's helpful. The way these switches work is there's two sides to them, like they're split down the middle here. So this side, that's basically how the, the, the working of the switch. And this other side, which has the blue and yellow, is the illumination side. So you're gonna have power in from your light source on this side, and then this side's gonna be your earth, obviously, your power, and then your load comes out of here. Your load meaning whatever you're powering. If it's a light, a fan, all the out power outputs, when you turn the switch on, the power coming out of that prong is gonna be for whatever device you're running. This setup where they're all looped like this is called a daisy chain. If you wanted to like look up more about how that works, it's just a simplified way of wiring something. Now not all these are, that you'd buy are gonna be the same either, so best thing to do is just test it with a power source first. I've got this little power pack here, but even if you just got if you can get some alligator clips off a 12 volt battery or something, that's pretty good to do as well. So starting with the lighting side, these two, and the earths are both on the on the top of both switches. So even that, though that's yellow, the two sides split, the earths are the two top on this one. Earth to that one, positive to the blue on this one. Voila! So when the, like the headlights or parkers are on, you can see where the switches are. That's all that circuit does, provides the lights. Not essential, you don't have to wire this side up if you don't want the lighting. Now we'll try the other side. So obviously black on black. And red, oh, oh, something's happening. So it tells me how, much, how many volts or what the alternator's doing. So the power going through it will light it up whenever they're on. We'll get this wired into the car, we'll earth it, we'll send power to it, then we should be able to tap power off everything. So like I'm gonna use one for my fan, but then I have the ability in the future to just add more things. Party on. All right, so next thing we've got to do is find our power source. Now, if there's only one tool you need to get for this kind of job that you don't already have, definitely get a test light. They're cheap, they're easy to use, and they'll save you a lot of pain and mistakes. Get one. So if you've got a full interior, like road going, E46 is going to be a bit more tricky because you're going to have a hard time getting to a lot. But it's a bit easier for me because I've already gutted half this thing. Now a good thing with these E46s is they've got these little junctions everywhere and basically they'll just be a junction for either like a series of earths. There's another earth one down here at my footwell. But they're not all earth. Some will be part of another circuit. If you can get the, this cover off, you can see they're just a series of little plugs. So what we're going to try and do is just tap into some of these for our earths and possibly power. Now this one I'm pretty sure is a positive one. Um, I just gotta find out what, what it's off, if it's on the ignition circuit or what. But this is awesome having these because that makes wiring up way easier. You can find them all through these things, some are in the back. Just make sure you test whether it's an earth or it's powered or whatever first before you go plugging anything into it. I definitely know this one's an earth because it's 
bolted to the shaft the body so I'll plug that on there and then I'll test for power Put the ignition on I will test this one here nothing so what if we turn the lights on there we go look at that so that whole circuit is obviously wired up to the lights now this is probably also part of the illumination for everything else like the HVAC system that used to go here and everything um, but that's good that means we for our light side of the switch we can tap into this which is nice and close to where we want it to be which is right here so now that I know that's power there I'll plug my test light onto this other junction and then we can confirm that that is an earth which in fact it is turn the lights off boom now the illumination side of the switch we should be able to just wire into these two here all right so we know we're, we're getting our power for the lighting which comes off the light circuit now now we'll look for the power for the actual switch again lucky for me I have deleted some accessories from this or quite a lot of accessories so I've got a lot of unused circuits we can use that are already fused which is good you probably already know if you have one of these where the fuse box is and how it comes down there we go now the switches on the switch panel are rated to 20 amps we usually say on the switch so we don't want to run a circuit with a fuse that's higher than that this is some of the wiring I've deleted well a lot of the wiring I've deleted and no it hasn't just been floating around like that I have had it taped up I just only just pulled it off now when I cut it all out too I cut it all staggered so there's less chance of uh, any of them touching each other I mean everything's fused anyway but it just eliminates any issue there all right again ignition on so that purple one here that's got power with accessories on that's the one we'll be using to get our main power off which is this one here number seven which falls under navigation so you can tap into most things it's just as long as the amperage doesn't exceed the circuit you can go off the cigarette lighter anything running off this switch panel is going to be on a relay anyway so it's not going to have like high amps running through it i'm also going to wire this up to a plug just so i can easily remove it if i need to do work on it or whatever so let's go So we got that all sorted now, wired it up to a plug, put all our little junctions back together which worked pretty well. So you want to put those plastic covers back on because you don't want live wiring hanging around. And now we can hook up the relay to the fan. So I've got a pretty big relay, 80 amps, because the fan circuit itself it runs a 50 amp fuse so it's pretty big. This comes as a 5 pin relay but we don't need the, uh, the 87A in the middle so we can just do away with that and run it as it is all right so now we just got to find the wiring for the fan or trace it to where we need it to go so this is the fuse for the fan uh, number 37 on mine don't know if you can hear that now that's the fan roaring away and if you look behind here big thick boy red with a blue stripe now problem with that is there's quite a lot of wiring here with a red with a blue stripe of the same gauge so I had to prod around for a while with my test light to find the right one which is this bad boy here see so if you look around see there's another one that one's got constant power to it so like if I put the fuse back in got power there and if I remove the fuse and the fans still working like a generator that's why it's still giving a bit of power that's how we know that's the one so we're gonna tap tap into this for the relay to go through Thick boy. All right, so now we've got the wiring for the fan hooked up to the power side of the relay. Relays, you've got a lot of numbers on them. Uh, number 30 is usually your power in. 
and 87 is your power out. So now we're going to just run these back over here so we can get our power out of the back of our switch and earth the relay to one of our junctions under here as well. Alright, so I just got some two core wire for the switching wire for the relay. It's got my one plug on one end for output from the switch and then the other little tab goes on the earth junction that I put all the rest on from earlier. Let's go. Moment of truth. The power. Yeah! Hear that? That's the fan. We got our lights. Sweet as. All right, that's awesome. We know it all works now. Now we just got to tidy everything up, meaning all the wiring, um, mount the relay, and do the cover for this. Alright, as far as tidying everything up, I was looking for somewhere to mount the relay under the dash. And I was looking on the side of the fuse box up here. And they've got these little slots up here which look like they mount some sort of relays. And my store bought relay slots straight on there. Winning! Just got to tidy up this mess. And this is the reality of the situation. Crap everywhere. So now I'm going to make a panel to cover this up, and to make that I'm using this, a baking tray. <laughs> now a few reasons for this, it's cheap, it's straight, it's already painted, but mainly this. So you'll see here there's a step down, so the panel goes straight here and then it steps down. So seeing as that's already got a step down, that's going to help us a lot, I hope. bit of sculpting on the metal cover just because this isn't perfectly square but it turned out pretty good I reckon you can buy these complete covers I think Condor Speed Shop does them um, where it has the step down and everything well you could still use something flat you'd probably just have to space out the top a little bit um, I mounted it off to the side too as you can see just in case I want to put something else here later on like maybe like an isolator or something like that also I'll be mounting my hydro around here so it could be like hitting switches when I'm like doing backwards entries, I doubt it. Hope you got value out of this. If you did, please hit the like button. It just helps the algorithm out. But anyway, thanks for watching. Love yous all. See you in the next one.